calorie-restricted mice eat all of their daily calories within the first two hours after getting their food, which is essentially one meal a day, or OMAD, and then fast for the next 22 hours until the next day when the food is again provided. So with that in mind, does fasting impact the health and lifespan extending effects of calorie restriction or CR? So a paper was published earlier this week that sought to address that question. And they showed that fasting drives the metabolic, molecular, and geroprotective effects of a calorie restricted diet in mice. So what was the study approach? Now there's a lot of data in this paper, so I'm only gonna focus on the data that directly relates to longevity. So this is, uh, they started the study in four month old male mice, and then there were three groups. An ad lib group, or ad libitum, which means that the mice had free access to eating as much food whenever they, whenever they wanted. And then classical CR, in which uh, the, se the second group ate 30% of the calorie intake when compared to the ad lib group. And then a third group, or diluted ad lib, which they diluted the diet with cellulose, which reduced overall calorie density, and then resulted in a 30% calorie restriction, but these mice were able to eat as much as they wanted whenever they wanted, but yet still have a 30% CR, which is what is shown here. So on the y-axis, we're looking at food consumption, FC, in kilocalories per day, plotted against age, which goes all the way up to uh, 850 days of age. So first, looking at the ad-lib diet, we can say that they consumed about 12 kilocalories per day. Now, for both the CR and the diluted ad-lib, which ended up having about a 30% CR effect, we can see that their intake is about 8.5 uh, kilocalories per day. And again, it's about a 30% CR for the diluted ad lib group and the calorie restricted group. So with that in mind, what was the effect of CR with and without fasting on body composition, glucose tolerance, insulin sensitivity, frailty, and lifespan? So first, body, body composition. And I've got this uh, titled as 30% CR, one meal a day, or pretty close to one meal a day, versus not one meal a day, or the diluted ad libitum group. Now note that each group spent 13 months on each diet, each respective diet. So first, uh, note that we're looking from left to right. With uh, We're looking at body weight, lean mass, fat mass, whole body lean mass, whole body fat mass, and uh, body fat percentage, adiposity, plotted against age of the mice on the x-axis. And starting with the ad libitum intake, we can see that they had the highest body weight uh, when compared with the other two groups, and they had age-related increases in body weight an age-related increase in lean mass, fat mass, and they had a higher body fat percentage at the end of the 510 days. So what about CR? So we can see that body weight was more stable and was significantly lower when compared with the ad lib group, the mice that were allowed to eat as much as they wanted whenever they wanted. They had pretty stable amounts of whole body lean mass, a small but significant increase in fat mass over time, and then a uh, small but also significant increase in uh, whole body fat mass, but about half the whole body fat uh, body fat percentage of the ad lib fed mice after the 510 days. So what about the diluted ad lib group, which was also 30% CR, but was not fasted like classical CR. So we can see that their body weight was lower when compared with classic CR, so 22 hour fast. Their, uh, their lean mass was also lower starting at nine months of age. The diluted ad lib group had a lower lean mass when compared with the one meal a day calorie restricted mice but they also had lower fat mass when compared with the 30% CR, one meal a day. And then overall body fat percentage was lower in the calorie restriction group that did not fast as much or as often as the uh, calorie restriction one meal, one meal a day. So that would suggest that uh, calorie restriction, but without fasting, may be better for overall body composition than calorie restriction with a prolonged fast all day. So is calorie restriction without fasting healthier than calorie restriction plus one meal a day? So to uh, help us uh, address that, uh, they, these uh, authors of the study looked at effects on glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity between the three groups. So first, starting with a glucose tolerance test, GTT. So in this case, glucose is infused, and then the disappearance of blood levels of glucose over time are assessed, and then the area under the curve, AUC on the y-axis, is, uh, is recorded. So again, we've got the three groups, ad lib and white, diluted ad lib, which is the 30% CR without fasting in blue, and then calorie restriction with an all day fast in black. And what we can see is that the greatest glucose tolerance was found for the mice that, had dilute, that consumed the diluted ad lib diet. In other words, 30% CR without fasting had a greater ability to remove glucose from the blood after a glucose infusion. And that was even better than classical CR with a 22-hour fast, which although CR with the 22-hour fast had a better glucose tolerance than the ad-lib mice, so the mice that were allowed to eat as much as they wanted whenever they wanted, 
their glucose tolerance wasn't as good as the mice that had had 30% CR but with less fasting. So again, this suggests that the 30% uh, CR but with less fasting may be better than uh, CR plus an all-day fast. Now, in contrast, uh, an insulin tolerance test, ITT, was also performed. And in this case, insulin is injected, and then the rate of disappearance uh, from, uh, of glucose from the blood is recorded, and the area under the curve, AUC, is also recorded. And in this case, we can see that the 30% CR group with an all-day fast had the best insulin, uh, insulin sensitivity, which this test is a measure of insulin sensitivity, and the 30% CR group that did not fast all day did not have a significant difference for its insulin sensitivity when compared with the ad lib group. So this suggests that the all day, C, uh, all day fast plus 30% CR is better for insulin sensitivity than not fasting all day for the same amount of calories. So metabolic effects are interesting, but does fasting or less fasting while on CR affect physiological function? And to assess that, the authors of the study looked at effects on frailty. So uh, we're looking at the FI, which is the frailty index. And in the study, they uh, presented data for six frailty-related measures. And as we'll see in a minute, they, they also looked at an overall frailty score, which included 25 measures. So these six frailty measures included uh, body composition, overall grip strength, kyphosis, which has to do with how much curvature is found in the spine, distension of the abdomen, uh, coat condition, so the condition of the fur, and then the loss of fur color. So first, what we can see is that aged mice on 30% CR and one meal a day, so an all-day fast, have lower frailty for most measures when compared with the ad libitum fed mice, or mice that were allowed to eat as much as they wanted whenever they wanted. So in terms of body, comp uh, body condition, grip strength, uh, 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 and uh, coat condition, and loss of fur color, the calorie-restricted mice that were fasted for all day were better, had a lower frailty compared to the ad lib fed mice. So what about 30% CR, but not fasted? And uh, first we can see that there was no difference in frailty when comparing 30% CR fasting plus not fa or not fasting for body condition, for grip strength, or distension of the abdomen. But then 30% CR uh, without fasting had a worse kyphosis, a worse co-condition, and a greater loss of fur color when compared with the CR mice that were fasted all day. So what about total frailty? So first we can see that the calorie-restricted mice that fasted for all day, about a 22-hour fast, had the least amount of frailty for, for the three groups. But then the 30% the CR uh, mice that were less fasted were just as frail as the mice that were allowed to eat as much as they wanted whenever they wanted but weren't CR. So uh, this suggests that CR plus an all-day fast is better for effects on uh, limiting frailty during aging when compared with the same amount of calories but not fasting. So what's the effect of CR with and without fasting on lifespan? So here we're looking at the survival curves, uh, survival plotted on the y-axis against age of the mice on the x-axis. And 50% survival, which I've indicated there, is the time when half of the mice in the colony are alive and half are dead. So what we can see when compared with the ad lib, the mice that were allowed to eat as much as they want whenever they wanted, but when compared with their lifespan, the calorie-restricted mice that were fed one meal a day, or essentially one meal a day, all day fasting, had the longest average lifespan. Conversely, the mice that were fed 30% CR, but could eat it whenever they wanted throughout the day, so the elimination of fasting, had the shortest average lifespan, not just with respect to the ad lib lifespan, but even shorter when compared with the same amount of calories, but uh, that were not fasted, so the CR group. So the diluted ad lib group, had the shortest lifespan compared to all the other groups. So that suggests that without fasting, mice on 30% CR have a shortened lifespan when compared with uh, the same amount of calories, but an all-day fast. And with ad-lib mice, mice were allowed to eat as much as they wanted, whenever they wanted. So in sum, fasting is required for CR, calorie restriction-induced improvements, for frailty and lifespan in male C57 black 6J mice. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to bio biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.